be to God that we do have an advocate with the Father who is ever making intercession on our behalf, even the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we fall short, he makes up that gap. Amen? And even still, when we pray as warriors that we're called to be, these prayer warriors, we don't know what to pray. We are in a world where we're filled with confusion and overwhelming battle. The enemy surrounds at times it feels as though they're surrounding us in darkness, the devil and his minions, and yet still we, we know not what to, to pray the Holy Spirit that's within us <laughs> prays on our behalf. Amen? And so this is an exciting thing is that we're not left orphans or we're alone. And yet, nevertheless, even though we know that this battle belongs to the Lord and it, it has to be of the Lord, we are called to be in the battle. We are called to be part of this battle. And yet the Lord has not left us naked and afraid, as we said last week. He's equipped us. He's given us armor. And so today we're going to continue um, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, the last chapter. And Paul pinnacled it with this chapter um, to get busy. We've had all these lessons that we've gone through, and now he says, okay, let's get busy. I've come to give you a purpose and a hope. I've come to give you an assurance of victory. And yet, get busy. <laughs> Mark, but march by faith. And don't be filled with fear of anything of this world, including the God of this world, the devil. You instead, revere me. See me. See my glory. See me and see my might. See me and see my power. See me and see my love. Be filled and be equipped. We went through last week uh, the, uh, the first components of the armor. We talked about the loins and how the loincloth was that which would piece together all of these other things. They'd be knitted up and tightened and also prepared for running. And then we went through the breastplate, which would protect all the vital organs. And most importantly, which we talked about with the heart. And out of the issues, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, and the issues of a man will come from their heart. And therefore, we said we must invite the Lord into our heart. It must be his house. And if it's his house, no one's coming. Amen? He's the defender of the heart. And so we need to make sure we've invited the Lord into our heart. And yet we have this breastplate that stops anything from coming into the heart that shouldn't be there. Whether it's through the ears, the eyes, or, or whatever it may be, we should protect our heart, guard our heart with this breastplate uh, that the Lord's provided for us. And then also we obviously talked about the feet charted um, to go to the gospel, to be busy to preach the gospel, to be quick, to be strong-footed, to be able to stand on the rock of Jesus Christ where we cannot be knocked off. It's a firm footing, and therefore we will not ever be shaken or moved by the trials or the storms that this world has to throw at us. If you're standing on the rock, if your feet are sharded with the gospel, you have a purpose and a hope, despite everything else that's going around in this world is chaotic. It's trying to prevent you from that. You have a purpose. You've been given a purpose to march wholly, boldly, and confidently with the power and the love that the Lord has given us and the discipline. So today we're going to go into uh, verse 16 of chapter 6 and talk about the next component of the spiritual armament that the Lord has equipped us with. Dear Heavenly, Gracious Father, Lord, as we go through these scripture verses, we pray that they would not just fall on deaf ears, but we would enter into the battle with the armament you've equipped us with. That we would take seriously this spiritual battle that's going on all around us. Lord, that we would not be entangled in the affairs of the world and be distracted and be overwhelmed and put on the shelf or rendered ineffective, but instead that your light would shine through us and penetrate the darkness and that many souls would come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, and with that, eternal life. Thank you for the gift that you've given each and every one of us. Thank you for the calling you've given to each and every one of us. Thank you for the place you put us in, in this battle that goes on until your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I decided to camp here again because he says, above all. Which means, out of all the armament, there's something extremely special about this shield of righteousness or of faith. This shield that will protect us. Not for us to play the righteousness, but the shield of faith. So there, the Lord says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Faith in what? Faith in God Almighty. Faith in his love. Faith in his promise. Faith in his word. Faith in everything he says. Not in you. And not in your own reasoning. And not in, your own, in, in all your uh, ability to see and hear and, and figure it all out all around you. If you go there, you're done. There's a spiritual shield you have to defend 
It's the first place. So we're going to go through five points of this shield and what they are, even though I'm not a point kind of person. I think it's important for today. <laughs> and hopefully you'll take away these points and you'll understand this incredible shield that we've been given. In the Old Testament, God calls himself the shield to Abraham. So when we think of this shield, obviously it's a shield of faith believing in God. That it's him who's got this huge barrier over every single one of us. You know, we've all, some of us have seen the Star Wars movies and we see the shield or Star Trek where they put up the shield and the lasers come in and it's the first line of defense. It's before the armor, before everything else. It's a bubble around. It's a protector uh, to keep us from that. And yet, who is that? The Bible's very clear who that shield is. God. God Almighty is our buckler. He's our shield and our defender. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 said that about Abraham. And then he also said that about the, the nation of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 29. And using formations or, or um, cooperative with other soldiers, this shield becomes a wall, if you will, a protected wall. And we're going to hit that one last. This is critical. But first and foremost, it's an individual shield to each and every one of you. To each and every one of you have been gifted with this shield to protect. And you're going to see that it's not just for you. It's for others as well. You have an incredible shield that's an empowerment to protect your body, your armament, from the attacks of the devil. As it said in verse 16 of chapter 6, it says, we're able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But what does that mean? It means, first and foremost, number one, the shield is impenetrable. Impenetrable. The shield of faith cannot be penetrated by anything of this world, by anything of the God of this world, Satan, the demonic forces of him. And that includes your mind. That includes your heart. That includes your entire body in any way, shape, or form. It's impenetrable if you have it up. If you're holding it up, if you're walking by faith, if you're moving in the faith that God has given you in Him, you will be able to walk and pursue and go forward unabashed or un, uh, un, unable to be stopped. The shield is first line of defense against all attacks, no matter what they may be. And it protecting, as we said, the rest of the armor. And we know that as these come in, these fiery darts, the, the soldiers would have these shields that were made, and Paul's looking on the Roman soldiers for this example again, a, a, a shadow of what is in heaven here on earth, and he was sitting there having these spiritual revelations as he's in prison, literally being attacked on all sides, and, and incarcerated, if you will, for the glory of God, and, and yet he could be, if anyone, complaining. I thought you were going to deliver me. I thought you were going to make me a superman, a superpower. And yet here he is, incarcerated in prison. And yet he's tearing down the strongholds of the prison all around him. He's seeing these soldiers that were some of the best and were the best at the time in the world with the armament that they had. And he sees their shields. And their shields were very special. They were made with a very tough wood. And yet around that wood was a leather that they would put around it. And they were able to interlock with the other shields that were up with the soldiers. And they were able to form like a turtle shell. Um, together. And yet, individually they were super strong. Individually they could be used as a weapon. They could be used to protect. And they also could be used to extinguish. So what's number two? Number two is they're able to stop further damage. When arrows were thrown through the air, and they, they oftentimes would be thrown by the thousands to, to hit the troops that were coming up to a, a, a wall of defense, and as they're coming they would shoot arrows, they would shoot rocks, they would shoot all kinds of things at them, and these shields were able to protect. But how were they able to extinguish the fiery darts? Because they were surrounded with leather, and this leather would be soaked before battle with water. So when the arrows would hit that leather and dig into the wood, it would fizzle out. It would fizzle out. It, all, it ensures that these fires are, if you will, of the devil, are nipped in the bud. Immediately when you're hit with one of these fiery darts, you'll know because they go, ouch! <laughs> it hurt. Something hit me. You'll feel the pressure. You'll feel the initial pressure. We haven't let it into our hearts or minds, have we? We are stopping it at the shield. 
We're stopping it before it gets to us, before it even gets to the armament, before it gets to our heart. But there's something resisting us. There's something stopping us from moving forward. And this is where these fiery darts come. And the idea of the fiery dart is not to stop there. The idea is that it will penetrate and ignite. How many of us are attacked with penetrations into our armament and we let it ignite? Because our faith is not extinguished with the water. The living water of God Almighty is not sufficient in our hearts and minds. The, the Holy Spirit, which God has poured upon us to quench these lies, to quench these attacks, because the deception is that God's not enough. The deception is that the shield can't hold. The deception is that this is going to spread. I can't let this go further. My, my plans are going to, to end. No, you can't let it go further in you. Don't worry about the plan that's ahead. God's already came that way. God's already got that. But we don't let it get extinguished, do we? We don't bring each thought that comes into our head into captivity, as it says in Philippians 4. Amen? We do not bring it into reality of God. Instead, we keep it into the shadow of this earth. And we're in that battle with the Romans, fighting in our own strength. And the Lord tells us in the scriptures, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This living water that is able to quench the fiery darts of the devil. We need to nip it in the butt. We need to stop it before it grows lethal. Many of us will have an attack of the devil. And by the way, I call them seeds. You know, they call them fiery darts. But really what he's trying to do is root it in. Really what he's trying to do is let it sit there like a time bomb. It's like time release sometimes. They're there, and we haven't, we haven't extinguished them. They're still smoldering, like that campfire that you let ease, you know, and you go to bed, you kind of put the ash over the top, but you wake up in the morning, you stir it around, it's still there. Oh, good, I can still cook. You blow on it, it blows up into a big fire. Some of us still have these smoldering arrows that need to be put out. They're things from the past that need to be completely doused with water and completely extinguished by faith. Not because of your emotion, not because they don't deserve what they, what you think they deserve, whoever it is, but because of God's mighty power, because of God's command, because I want to be found in the bubble or in the strong tower of God Almighty. I want to be standing on the rock of God and that he is my defense. Not me, but he is my defense. And the only way that happens is if we take him at his word. We believe him. And we extinguish these things. Whether it's through forgiveness, which we talked about in the class before this one, go out on YouTube, a phenomenal class on forgiveness that, um, that Trevor did. Please go out, watch it, and, and like it. But th this is living. It, sometimes just by giving grace when someone hasn't given you grace. But giving mercy because someone hasn't given you mercy. Giving love because someone hasn't given you love. Giving forgiveness because someone hasn't given you forgiveness. Why? Because God has given you all of those. Amen? Because he is the defender. And it's not acceptance. No, I'm small, smoldering that and putting it out. But it is forgiveness. It is not letting Satan come to divide. He wants to divide you from each other, for sure. Especially your loved ones. And sometimes sin will divide. Sometimes the love of Jesus will cause a divide. For sure, it should. However, sometimes it's just the devil. Sowing discord. Among the brethren. Six things us the Lord hate, right? Proverbs chapter 6. He can show a discord among the brethren. Sometimes it's just gossip and backbiting. Sometimes it's judging not, not yourself as you're judging others around you. These fiery darts come from every angle, but you can know this for one, one thing for certain. They're lies. They're deceptive. Bring them into captivity and extinguish them with the word of God. Walk holy. Walk rightly. We have to nip it in the bud quickly. The Lord says, be quick to repent, right? Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen to God. Hear what he has to say. Go in the word and let the word bring your thoughts into captivity and put out this fire that's starting in you. I see too many people obsessing. I see too many people that they can't let go. And holding on to it, and that's what Satan wants. Hold on to that hot ball. You know, when they teach you in elementary school, hot potato. <laughs> right? Get rid of it. Boom. I'm not saying throw it to someone else. But I am saying throw it away. Throw it away. Stop holding on to it. 
If it's not productive for your walk and your battle with the spiritual battle that God's called you to reveal Jesus Christ to those around you, to shine light, if that's not part of it, let it go. If it's not helping, let it go. Put it out. The Roman shield were lined with that leather to soak it before battle. We're lined with something much greater. We have a perpetual stream of living water that puts out all of those things. So much so, not just for us, but for all those around us. For everyone even around us, their fire. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. There's no shortage with the water of God. He satisfies completely. The other thing is, this, is that the shield is self-healing. It, it will heal. This is super shield. <laughs> Even when it's been damaged, it's super, it's super shield can be healed. It's the living water of Jesus Christ which extinguishes and cleanses of any guilt, any shame. It heals wounds and satisfies the hurts and the thirst that we have within us. The shield will complete us. The shield where it's been damaged can be repaired and will be repaired all the time if you believe in God. If your faith is in God and God alone. If you don't, then it will be broken and it will be penetrable and it will have all these other things and the flames will continue on. But whatever damage has been caused to you from the past can be healed. I don't care what it is. You need to let it be healed. You need to let this shield block it and don't let it fester and get further into your heart where you have a root of bitterness. Some of us have that. Some of us have let it through. The good news is, is that the living water can cleanse not only the out, but the in as well. Amen? It can, he can heal those wounds. And you should let him heal those wounds. We were talking about in the class this morning about forgiveness. And I said, you know, well up on the cross, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin, that we would become that righteousness of God. And, and he was pierced. And he was whipped. Scorned for our transgressions. He was pierced. And left scars. Though he rose from the dead on the third day, when he went to heaven, the thing he took with him are those scars. The thing he took with him, he says, when they look upon him and say, where did you get those scars? I got these in the house of my friends. And nevertheless, while he's on the cross, him who's come to save, him who's come to be a light, him who's walking in the shield of God Almighty, was persecuted for the Father's words, was persecuted for living as a light. And yet, he said, these are a reminder of my love for you. And he, he shows us those scars in heaven. Those are the only scars that are going to make it to heaven. Ours aren't going to. Ours aren't going to. Though we bring glory to Jesus Christ when we receive scars and wounds. Paul says, if I boast in anything, I boast in my infirmities, for they are of Jesus Christ. They identify me with him. If we're persecuted for his name's sake. Amen? Not for us in our own battles. Some of us are getting beaten up because we're fighting the battle we don't belong in. So he's in heaven. Those scars are there. Yes, thanks be to God that he took them for us. But ours will be removed. We will be given a new body, a new and everlasting body. Nothing anyone can do to you here on this earth can be compared to what the Lord will do for you in heaven, Almighty. Amen? This eternal new body that we will be getting. So it self heals. We will be healed. I don't care what the wound is. You can let God heal it for you. The next thing is, number four, he protects against sneak attacks. The shield is there when you don't see necessarily everything coming. It's there to be bigger than your eyes. I'm here to tell you, and many of you know this, most of the time when we get very upset, it's when we're ambushed. It's when it comes out of that park. You know, it's, it's, it, Mike Tyson said everyone has a plan until they get punched. You know? and, then, and then the other thing is, is they, the, the same fighters say, it's not the punch that you see that knocks you out. It's the one you don't see. It comes from nowhere. And this is important for the shield. The shield protects against sneak attacks. Remember this. Put your shield up and you'll be defended from things you don't even know are coming at you. Many times you're walking with the faith of a child, and you have no idea you're in the lion's den. You have no idea you're marching through this world. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'll fear no evil. You're not walking scared because the Lord is my defense. And you're marching forward, and you have no idea the world doesn't understand the battle that they're in. They have no idea the attacks that they can't see with their, with their eyes and their ears, or, and, and how they're being manipulated in every way, shape, and form. 
But this shield protects against those sneak attacks. They're gonna come, and they always come when you least expect them to the word sneak attack. <laughs> Amen? It's those arguments that come. One minute you're, you're walking along, you're at peace with your wife, you're at peace with your kids, you're at peace with your work, your co-workers, you're at peace, and then all of a sudden, some tiny little fire comes in that becomes huge that you didn't expect that comes from the side. Is your shield up at that time? If it is, you'll just keep marching through it. You'll stay eyes fixed on the Lord and trust God. If not, you will be distracted and pulled away. And you will start to wound, and you will be wounded. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, the chapter of faith, uh, and we couldn't go through this lesson without touching on this verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, who said it? Say it louder. Not seen. Not seen. I don't see it. Faith is about trusting God, like a child. I won't see everything, I cannot see everything, but I will see the path the Lord's put before me, and I will see God in everything if my eyes are on Him, if He is my shield. And by the way, that's what I mean, we need to keep our eyes fixed on. The rest God will take care of. Be you not entangled in the affairs of the world, right? Again, coming in from every angle to get you to turn to the left or to the right. The shield is your defense. Faith. Number five. And this is why I said we start off with this kind of precept. The shield is not for ourselves alone. This is so important. If you're not holding the shield up for you, then do it for your baby. Do it for your husband. Do it for your wife. Do it for your family. Do it for your friends. Do it for your enemies. Hold your shield up because your shield is a super shield. It can cover others as well. Pretty cool. It's a pretty cool shield. So, number five, it works to defend others. The shield is only a defensive piece of armor which can only protect, or which can not only protect us, but other people as well. Um, by faith, we can protect others. How do we know this? Well, Matthew chapter 8 talks about this. With, by the way, a soldier, a centurion soldier, a Roman soldier. The one who's holding all this armament. The one who had all these things to be defended. And, and was a good warrior because he was in charge. As we read in the scriptures. It says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, I say, Lord, my servant lieth home sick with palsy, grievously tormented. He was concerned about his servant. How many of us are only concerned about our bosses? But the spirit and the shield of faith says God's concerned about everyone. Not just me. Everyone. Especially the weak. Especially those who can't defend themselves. Especially those. Is this not the spirit of Jesus Christ for you? Did he not come to protect you because you couldn't protect you? We should have the same heart as we're moving by faith. And so he cares for his servant. I'm sure he cared for his fellow soldiers too, but this one in particular had fallen in the battle. This one in particular was wounded, injured. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion said unto him, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. This Gentile, this servant, believed more than all of the Pharisees and the educated uh, educators and educated people of Jerusalem. The Jews who were supposed to know the Messiah. He trusted more in the word of God than all of them. They killed him. The centurion believed that he had authority to speak and it would happen. He believed there was something bigger than what he could see with his eyes and that he would have to go there physically and take the journey. No, he had something spiritual that was bigger than anything he could reason with his mind. And the centurion believed this. With all his heart, he believed this. I don't know why. Somehow the Spirit of God touched the Spirit within him and he believed in Jesus Christ. It's a miracle. An absolute miracle when it happens. This is the shield of faith you don't see with your eyes. He moved forward to heal in love. He cared for this guy. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. 
And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh. And my servant do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not in, not in all of Israel. Wow. Wow. Just started with love. Care. He cared for his soldier, his helper. He cared. And he cared so much that he sought healing. And he went to the only place that he knew could heal him, Jesus Christ. This had to be bold. I mean, he's coming through the crowd. These are all Jewish religion sack and all this other thing. And he's coming through, standing out in the crowd with his armament, probably. Tough soldier. And what does he do? It's almost like he just lays all his armament down and says it's worthless to help the ones I love. This can do nothing. I need you. I need you to be my defender. I need you to be my healer. Not just for me, but do it for me, for him. When one hurts, we all hurt. When one joys, we all joy. This is faith, isn't it? It's faith to believe that. When you hear someone's in the hospital and you throw up a prayer for them, you're not throwing it up. And I hate the term prayer. There's power in prayer. No, there's power in the one who we're praying to. And only the one we're praying to. Amen? Because I was sitting there looking at this YouTube as I was studying for this lesson, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And I'm going through worship songs. And I'm not a worship leader. I am in, in, in so much respect of not the singer, the worship leader of the church, to worship God at all times. Amen? Lead in that respect. But I'm like looking at all these songs going, I don't know which one. <laughs> and I saw this one that looked pretty cool. And as I'm going through, it, it had all the right words, but it didn't have Jesus. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of it, it showed a bunch of American Indians. And then it showed a bunch of other religious people and religious people. And I said, no, no, no. My faith is in Christ and Christ alone. He and he alone is the rock I stand on with my footing. It's in him and what he's done for me that I believe he'll do for others that I walk in. He's the only God who came to the earth and died for the ones he loved. Verily I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The ones who should have known, the ones who God had defended the most in all the earth, would reject that faith. And they would be cast out because they didn't believe in Jesus Christ, who was the Messiah. The buckler, the living water, the everything the armament speaks of. They had no idea. Because they looked with their eyes and not with the Spirit of God. They didn't see him. And they'll go to a place where there'll be war. Perpetual, continual war. Why? Because they're with that God who only likes war and death. And they like that in their heart. They've chosen that. And this is where they'll go. Those who choose peace with God will have peace for everlasting life. He goes on and says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done to thee. And his servant was healed that same hour. He was healed while they were praying, while they were talking, because he believed Jesus' shield was beyond the body. Bigger able to penetrate anywhere in the world, any heart in the world. And this is an incredible part of the shield. Is it, it can not only stop the, sh the, the sneak attack, it can go beyond what we see and think. We as Christ are knitted together as a church and to protect our fellow soldiers for Christ and to pray and, and with faith and prayer. Um, I, I kind of couple the next scripture verse if we skip down we're going to go through verse 17 next week but verse 18 goes along with this one saying praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching therefore with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints so there's a prayer of faith part of the shield is being able to attack 
or being able to stop and prevent preventative measures, preemptive strikes, or even afterward strikes with the prayers that we throw up to God Almighty. We can pray by faith for the fallen, just as a centurion. This is something I admit to you as a pastor struggled with for a long time. Because maybe because I grew up, you know, as a counterintelligence agent, thinking literally becoming a, a computer programmer, law enforcement, this, you know, black and white, black, I need to see, I need to I'll figure it all out. And the Lord had to work with me in this. And my mom was on her deathbed. And she was in a hospital. She was kicked out of a hospital that literally put her on Channel 8 News to boast on her, being joined together with her husband at the time, and they both were dying together. It says a dying couple gets their, their wish until he died, and then they booted her. <laughs> and sent her down to the to down to Naples to a place down there, and and it's a longer drive for me. I'm trying to go out there every night, and I'm seeing people die left and right. It's killing me. I'm watching my mom. She's got bed sores. They're not turning her, and she's let's just say it was not. It was appalling to come into the room to smell. It's your mother. Horrible. And I see people dying, and I just know it's not it's not her time yet. And they're trying to kill people with morphine and. For whatever reason, my mom hadn't died, and yet they, they started to give her more morphine for the pain, rightfully so. But in that respect, I thought, well, it's too late to talk with her. It's too late to help her, to get her out of that place and bring her home where we can be closer, we can be together and be family with her and die with her. She said, the only thing I want is not to die alone. And I didn't know when it would happen. She's so far away. I would try to go out there every day after work, but I didn't know. And her, her last husband... His brother was a pastor. And him and I were on the phone and we were talking. And he said, let's pray. Let's pray. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And of course I'm like, let's pray. I've been praying. What do you think I've been doing? He said, I said, listen, she's on morphine now. This, that, the other thing. He said, God can reach her. We prayed for my mom. I hung up the phone. In less than 10 minutes, my mom called me and said, come get me. I'll come local. I'll come local. I drove as best I could. Probably broke a lot of laws. Got my mom and brought her to the Hildebrand. And my mom passed away about a month later at Hildebrand with family, with me right there with her by her side. God can do anything. At that point, it, it said something to me. I don't care if they're drunk. I don't care if they're in drugs. I don't care if they're out of their mind. You have a shield of faith. You have prayers that can reach and penetrate anyone, anywhere, anytime. Do you believe like the centurion? Do you truly believe? And I'm not talking name and claiming. I'm saying to believe in the one you're talking to, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you think or ask. He can. And if he doesn't, there's a reason. My mom didn't die right away. My brother, who had odds with her, I was able to fly up and make right and make amends. Serious, serious trouble between those two. And now he's at peace, and so is my mom. She didn't stop the suffering right away, but God certainly answered my prayers. He certainly moved mountains like I could never even imagine. James chapter 5, verse 13 says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray, and the prayer of faith will save the one who's sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Don't quit! Faith never stops. Love hopes all things. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 says, Two are better than one. They have good reward for their labor, for if, if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him who's alone when he falleth, for he hath not another one to help him up. We are a church. We are a body. We are a flock to the Lord God Almighty. When in the flock you are protected, not just by you, but by the shields of your brothers and sisters, whose faith is in Jesus Christ. When you wane, yes, you have the Spirit of God who will make prayers and intercession on your behalf with words you can't speak. Yes, you have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's ever making intercession on your behalf. But you are the first line of defense also for your brothers and sisters, for the church. Amen?
take it serious. Put your shield up, not just for you, but the, as the Roman soldiers moved forward, I said they were built this so they could interlock. And they would interlock one with another, and they would form an impenetrable wall, and they would march forward, and they would form some on top, some below, and it would be what's called a turtle shell. And nothing could get in. Nothing could get in. Where do you extinguish those fiery darts when they come to you? Someone comes with gossip. Someone comes with this backbiting, doubt, all these other things. Or someone's coming because they're out in the battlefield in the place where they shouldn't be. We can pray for forgiveness for them. We can pray them home. We can pray for conviction. And we can cover them. Love covers a multitude of sins. We can forgive the sins that have come into us because of them. Amen. This is faith. You're not going to do this with anything that's of the flesh. You will not succeed if you're going to try to do this in the flesh. But if you do this in the spirit, nothing will stop you. Amen? If you do this by faith, nothing will stop you. We're going to go to communion. Um, if we could, brothers, just uh, hand out the communion. And as we do, I... I you know, on Thursday we talked about coming to communion with the right heart, with the right <coughs> spirit. That we come before a holy God. We come before a perfect God. We come before a pure God. And as we do, we want to bring ourselves holy. We want to bring ourselves righteous. We want to bring ourselves in Christ's righteousness, which is the only way. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want you to think about this shield of faith. I want you to think about our belief in what Christ has done for you as we go to remembrance about what he's done for us on the cross. Take it wholeheartedly. Wash yourself in the word, in the living word of God Almighty and be forgiven. He says if you confess your sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Let's confess to God. It's only him that we're concerned about, obviously. He's the one who holds, who holds uh, judgment and only him. And he doesn't hold it for those who believe in Jesus Christ, who repent and come to him by faith. <laughs> Sorry, those on Zoom, I usually warn you ahead of time. You got some time to go get some bread and juice. Remembering his body which was broken for us. 
and believing. And likewise, also, after the supper, saying, as he took the cup, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, that you now are no longer children of darkness, but children of the light. You are no longer of your blood that was tainted, but of the blood of the new and everlasting covenant through the Lord Jesus Christ. You are now new DNA, <laughs> new things that he's made, but you must believe. You must receive it by faith. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world? Do you believe that he is your sufficiency? Do you believe everything he did is all you need to come to the table boldly with the Lord God Almighty and commune? Do you invite others with the same heart? Do you believe that the Lord can cleanse them and has cleansed them? Let's partake knowing that the Lord did not die and have a supper of one, but a supper of many that would come to him by faith in him, in God Almighty, in Jesus' name we pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you that you are our defense. We thank you that you are our, our, our general, that you've allowed us to be partakers in this battle. Though you don't need us, but you allow us to grow in the graces and mercies of Jesus Christ through it. Father, that you mature us to a place where we're no longer tossed to and fro like little children, but we're able to stand firm. Lord, I pray that the shield of faith would be ever before us. That, Lord, even those things we cannot see, we would take hold of, knowing that you are not a liar, that everything you say will come to pass. We trust in your promises. Lord, even as we were looking for a name for our new puppy, you threw a rainbow up in the sky. And I don't believe that was necessarily for the name of the dog. But, Lord, as I let go of my old dog, and, and, and there was a beautiful sunset behind us, may we march forward looking at the rainbow you placed ahead of us. Lord, we know that there's treasure in your promise, that you will never lie, that it will come to pass. Help us to walk in your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.